Well, build my gallows and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance to spit in his eye well, he gave me balls, but I can see between To a dusty yard and a long gone green They call that freedom, if you know what I mean And I drown my sorrows, but the whiskey's gone I'm sober as good Hello everybody, welcome to Long Bangers I'm Matty, this is episode 136 uh, Joined tonight by Jamie and Colin Jamie, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, thank you very much How are Good you? Stuff. Yeah, I am good. Just uh, before we started recording, we were talking about words that we hadn't heard before, and he introduced me to the word jugal, which is bug or dog. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bug for, for dog. Singular. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> uh, and flum, which is a fiver. Which is a fiver, yeah. Well, so send you, say, uh, anybody else that knows the, the meaning of these words, just the 80295. Aye. <laughs> it's a confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> Chugle your thumbs at uh, 80295, right? Yeah, Colin, how are you doing? I'm good, mate, aye. Getting, uh, getting there. Back to work properly and that, so aye. All right. Aye. That sounds like a lot of fun. Mm. Mm-hmm. Always is. Uh, right, what are we talking about tonight? We have got uh, Cup win and our broth. I keep wanting to say we were playing Aloha. See, like the whole time since the draw's been made, I've wanted to say we were playing Aloha. So if I did that, I'd be. He's the resigned, aye. Oh, yeah. um, I don't think I didn't follow Alo, I don't if the results have been good or bad or indifferent, but can it be that good if he's fucked off? Um, it's good, it's good that he did not on the anniversary as well, didn't he? Kenny's marked that as against the day with her bad news for the Ferguson family, probably. Yeah, he's maybe that down, he's still down, and it's just Aye. that, that date's triggered him. Aye, that's me away, sick of this. On, walking away on the fucking 14th of February. <laughs> Um, so our growth anyway, if I, if, I, if I call him Aloha later on, it's totally accidental, and uh, you can correct me. Um, in the Scottish Cup, we went through to the quarterfinals. Uh, we'll talk a wee bit about the media coverage and how they've been treating Sean Maloney. Uh, some listeners' points we'll talk about, and then we'll look ahead to Ross County as well. So kicking off with the, the game on Sunday, Colin, do you want to talk us through how you, how you thought it went? It was an overall before we start picking it apart. I, I thought we, I thought we played quite well. Um, and they, they had their chances, but I think, I think uh, their manager summed it up quite well that we, we deserved to win it with a better team. Um, and uh, I t- t- well, I was going to say took our chances, but we had more chances than we took again. But at least we took some of them this week. Um, and I think he'll get in any trouble this week for saying it could have been more. So, uh, I it was, I thought it was, it was quite good. Even at, at, in the group chat, I think. Um, Liam for down the slope and, and so we both said if we had uh, carry on playing like this we'll be all right. Like even at one 0 yeah. down, that's, you could see we were we were the better side. So I was, I was quite happy with it really. How about you, Jamie? Overall, what was your, your impressions of the game? I'm not gonna lie, I was worried after the, the goal went in quite <laughs> so early, um, but a totally professional performance. Some really uh, good standout performances for me. I thought Ewan Henderson was, but he, he showed why we got him. Um, it was terrific. Some of the passing and, and that he was doing uh, was fantastic. Um, I think a couple of the guys needed to maybe change their stilettos, kept sliding on their arse. I think we could have been two goals to the good had there not been a couple of slips. I, 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 a good professional performance. Um, and I'm just delighted to get in the next round because I think everybody had us pegged to go out. <laughs> um, and no, so much all the Hibs fans, but they were, they were certainly worried. Well, certainly I was. It was a very slippery pitch call, and you think the decision, particularly like Chris Cadden, he chose to wear roller skates, I think, for the first half anyway. It's <laughs> <laughs> watching the Winter Olympics, <laughs> say Blades, I think. The, the, uh, I know there was a few of them, even the, but the thing is, it wasn't even just their players, because there was our both boys went doing on their arse doing it at the, at the other yeah. end as well. So, yeah, and they're there every week or every fortnight. So um, it was just one of the days. Eh? I, I don't think the TV picked up quite how bad it was. I wasn't there, but from what I heard, the folk that were there, it was. The, the cameras maybe didn't show it quite as uh, as much as 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 bad as it was. Sorry, so uh, I I don't know I don't know if you can get big long studs anymore. I used to when I played I used to be the long studs on in the winter, but um, I don't know if you can get such a thing. I heard Rooney talking about. I seen a clip of Rooney actually talking about wearing long studs so he can go and do some then. Um, 
when he was playing Chelsea. It's in his doc- documentary thing that's on Prime. Amazon Prime. Um, and there's a wee clip of him saying yeah. that he changed his t- intentionally changed the long studs so he could go and do somebody. And he done John Terry. John Terry went injured for however many weeks after it. Right, and if the likes are racist, so well he knows he's safe. They say John Terry. If he'd seen somebody <laughs> else, spoke maybe on my arms a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's hard to fit more on a slippery pitch. Like we we had a so I used to coach for my son's team when he was we a team called Bayside in Dunfermline, and uh, they play at Petrivi, and we had like a coaches versus players or coaches versus dads. I can't fucking mind what it was. Anyway, ended up playing, and this was after I'd had my retirement for football. And it was soaking wet, and I had they weren't the quite mouldies, but they weren't far off it. It was the blades, kind of blade studs you get. Them. <laughs> and I tried to run, and you kind of like in the cartoons we have, like they like, sort of run on the spot, and then they go anywhere. But that's what the it was like. Just with, with the dirt fly, fired up behind me, it's like you're, you're uh, wheel spinning. So I had some sympathy. Josh Doig did it as well, didn't he? He slid trying to kick. Uh, in fact, I nearly I did that trying to kick the dunks ball in the back garden. I came when you catch yourself just at, yeah. just at the last yeah. minute before you're about to properly fall. I managed to save myself, otherwise the uh, aye, it would have been a Syrian one of the pavement too. Um well we're talking about I football boots and <laughs> slip him. So we had a we had a few chances. So Jasper uh, went down first half as well in the box, Jamie. I think that was a good shoot for a penalty or was he chancing it a bit? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I he was definitely not getting a penalty for that. It was uh, it was <laughs> it was comical. Uh, I was actually having to recollect what that was because he, he put in a good cross after slipping as well, but it's that should have scored for me. Um, I can't, can't even remember if that was first or second half. He was he was looked quite good actually. His um, his passing range was very good, long and short. I thought it was uh, it was excellent he, 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 when he was on the ball. Looked quite dangerous. So I think he's de- definitely got to be one of the future. I know we've agreed a a, a price if we want to take it up, um, and I. I I think it was stupid not to take that, but it certainly looks like he's got a lot of talent, that laddie. Aye, what did you think his performance called? Aye, he looks, he looks sharp. Um, I thought he looked quite good um, as well. I think even the other night when he came on at Ibrox and that, he, I need, there's three games now he's played the part off eh, or started now. I think he, he definitely looks like, he, he looks ready for the team now. Like he, He's... Uh, Looks looks impressive enough to. I mean, it's only three. It's not even three full games, but happy to see he looks all right. Like yeah, I'm not going to, to write him off this early, certainly. And, uh, I swear, I swear, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just because he, he he's playing a lot on the right, so obviously that's where Cadden is. Now, obviously, I think everybody's uh, acknowledged how good Cadden has been, but he just doesn't find players well enough for me. You know, he's, he's getting into great positions. He's movement even, but. I, I, the crossing, I don't think. I'm starting to come round to that, Jamie. I, I was a wee bit previously saying he's putting good balls in, and the strikers need to do more to get on the end of them. Like he's putting it in a good area, you know that chat that you get for the boys in the TV. But they're just not going to. So now he needs to just pick them out because they're just not going to do it. And there's times where I've noticed he's like he's got the blinkers on, and, and he, I think, was it was it yesterday or the other day, he took a shot on, and you think, cut it back. Uh, a, Nisbet's standing uh, totally unmarked there and, yeah. and he's taking a shot on a hard angle um, and it's like he, he gets to a position and he just hits it it's one way or another but but I think some of the balls he puts in have been quite good and there's just nobody there and I don't think that's always his fault I think the strikers or striker could be doing more That's what um, I I'm saying about this the, the position that Nisbet's been asked to play you need him in the box to get on the end and uh, stuff like that He's coming really deep tactic. he was really deep yesterday at times wasn't he he was an extra man in midfield it's, it's a false nine he's playing for, and it's, but so he's yeah. he, you're trying to get him to basically drop deep, and that's supposed to disrupt defenders. But most teams in Scotland play a flat back four, so you're not disrupting anything because they're not coming out of shape. But um, yeah, it's good on the ball, but he's not he's not that type of player. I mean, I'd rather see him in the box. And what the the goal that he scored was outstanding, great touch, great finish, um, and that just it looked like he didn't have any uh, confidence issues, but he did have a couple prior to scoring the goal. Um, but I, uh, Chris Cadden, a, a, a terrific player, but, but we need somebody in the box to be getting to these places. I mean, they look at the, the the pass for the first goal. Louis put that on right on Dimitri's head. You know what I mean? It's just one of the things. Yeah, I think when you're any kind of forward, forward player and you're looking out for a man, you can hit in an, an area if the, the play is moving at a fast pace. But if you've got time to look up and hit a hit a player or running into a certain space, it's much more effective. Uh, 
starting eleven. Do you think that's closer uh, to our strongest starting eleven, Jamie, or do you think there's still changes so who, to be made? Who we've got, we've got McGinnis out, uh, Hanlon, Newell. Um, Newell um, and Mueller was on the bench as well. He was good when he came on, by the way, as well. Yeah, but even good. out with his goal, he was very good. He looked very lively. Again, the Jasper, Cad, and Mueller, they all seem to be of a similar ilk. Um, and it's fitting them into that position. I know he was there with, uh, uh, in the St. Mun game. He played him as a forward, Mueller, or Miller, whatever you want to call it, whatever folk are saying. And people don't know what to say Mueller because of the <laughs> the, uh, the name thing about it. It's uh, he he's he's very good. I just don't know where he plays really. But every time he's come on, he's, he's looked excellent. What well, were you calling you Gary? A wee bit, that's all right. We we can have that's kind of how this podcast goes, isn't it? Like we're, we're not very good at sticking to topics. No. Um, what are we talking about again? No, the the uh, the, best uh, the, the I think Hanlon will come back in when he's fit. I, I do, I, and and that could even be at this at the expense of like. Because I'm not convinced. I think he's a defender, but I don't know if he's the footballer that that he, he would appear to want. Um, I agree. He's, yeah, he makes his makes lot of mistakes. Yeah. So I think I think Hanlon is a stick on to come back in the team. I know a lot of folk. He's, he's kind of one. Uh, he's one that the boo boys like to have playing because um, they can always pin it on him. But I think yeah. I said I said just watching the game. I think Hanlon's one of the boys that when you when he plays. You, you didn't really talk much about him other than to maybe try and pin the blame on him for something. When he's no playing, that's when you notice, that's when you realise the value is, is worth, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think he'll be, I think he'll be straight back. He's a captain as well, so he's, he's likely to come back in. I'm not claiming to be a, an expert there at all, like, because he is the captain. Captains generally come back in like your number one keeper sort of thing, isn't it? They're always, yeah. they would always come back in when fit in that. So um, I think, I think he'll come back in and it could be for well, who's been playing there? Stevenson played there for a bit, but he hasn't been field now. And um, Doig was maybe there yesterday. So then, and then Rocky's another one that could go. So I think it could be any of them could lose their place to Hanlon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you think he'll go straight back in for Stevenson? Aye. Or or Doyle's. Well, because Stevenson played. Stevenson was man of the match yesterday. In my opinion, like him. Yeah. Henderson's really good as well, and Cadden had a good game as well. Amongst others, but I think uh, Stevenson was the he was he was all over the place yesterday. He was he was covering every blade of grass like he was. Uh, when you talk about playing for the jersey and leading for the front, and can we all say lack of leadership when we get beat? Well, we, we saw leadership with th- somebody just bowling and shouting at folk all the time yesterday, leading for the front, and that's what he done. So uh, he, he knows what it's all about. So he's the kind of boy you need in your team as well, and it's another one obviously that can easily affect criticism like like uh, Hanlon and that does as well, but. You can't doubt him yesterday, like. Um, so, I think Newell will come back in the team. It might not be for Stevenson, though, which is the obvious change. Um, it, it could be for it could be for Doyle's. Yeah, the interesting I that. thing you talk about there with uh, the leadership column because we'll talk about it a wee bit more when we come out and talk about the media. But you had have sort of the pressure going into this game, right? It was probably the. The game that everybody had singled out, in fact, they had because you, you, any, any show that you watch singled this game out as potential banana skin or an upset. Everybody uh, was talking up how good our growth were. Conditions are shite. So we pitch, Ken, all, all, all the rest of it, yeah. and five minutes in, we're a goal down. After that, though, I think the team, uh, I don't know, you, you thought so, Jamie, how, how do you think the, or what did it say about the team's character for the way they responded to, to the setback? Um, I, I, I thought they responded brilliantly because obviously our issue uh, was scoring goals and if, like if most people ask what they were basically saying um, we, we are definitely a better team than our of course we are. Um, they're a part-time side, you know, we should technically, we've got a much bigger budget but where were the goals going to come from and we created much more chances than we have been and I don't know if that's just something changing with the team because it's, it's tactics changed yesterday as well. He wasn't he using the play out for the back and Kenny? Um, I, I think that bullish style that he was he doing it when, when he first came in. No, we're going to play a certain way. He's, it's dawned on him that actually we can't play that way in every game because it's not going to suit every team. 
in the um, in our league or even obviously in the championship. So he was playing the balls longer when required, and it was it was yeah, it was having an effect. So a couple of times Jasper had dropped into the the centre of the midfield, and he was spraying passes out to to the wings. Good passes, but you need to have players that can play that. As I've seen earlier, he's he's definitely got that. But brilliant character, um, as I say, because. Especially on like sports round, they were itching for Hibs to get beat yesterday. Itching for it, and you the the knives would have been at for Maloney, and it's it's too soon. Cathro this and blah 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 blah, just horse shit nonsense. But um, I, I feel that the fans would have been definitely all over him had we went to the cup. And all. What about you, Paul? What do you do you think you said about the the team the way that they responded and saw the game no, out as well? It one 0 down. We were this is, is already. To have touched on at the start, like that was we were playing really like, some decent stuff at one 0 down, and I'm thinking, dude, we're winning this game, like even even at one 0 down, which is surprising considering be firing out stats last week about has only scored him once in in the league this season and or this year, sorry, yeah, uh, so far. But I still thought we're we're better than them. You could see we were a better team than them. We were playing no bad stuff. Um, but I mean, there's boys like it's boys like Stevenson and and uh, that, that that drove the team on. He was everywhere, he was tackles excellent. in and driving it forward. He was out wide. He was running. You could see him when it was like cleaning up when a corner was getting cleared. He was the one bombing up the left hand side when he was playing centre midfield. You know what I mean? He was, and it wasn't just him, but he he was the the one that caught caught my eye the most. Um, but, but I Henderson was excellent yesterday. Taylor, when you said that already, mm-hmm. well impressed with him because I've been a bit dubious, like just because I thought it was maybe the name he was living off a wee bit and this reputation Celtic fans gave him despite them never fucking playing him, like you know. And I thought, like. like it's like we used to talk about Jimmy McCluskey being, being the next big thing and all that. And I thought it was a wee bit like that. Um, and yeah. he is a bit lightweight. He needs to he needs to bulk up a bit in that. But I'm sure they'll have programmes and plans for him uh, on that front. And he showed nice touches yesterday. He's not scared to have a shot, which is a big complaint I've had on our midfielders for a couple of seasons now anyway. Um, but he, he's, he's had probably more shots than the rest of the midfield added together already. And he's only been here five, six weeks. Yeah. Um, so, no, I was, quite, uh, I was quite impressed with him yesterday. He better play down in the corner as well, wasn't he? Kind of was shielding the ball when he sort of back heeled it through the boys' legs and, and went round yeah. them. That was uh, always like to see that. Um, we conceded in so after it was like five or six minutes. The we suspicion a handball in the was it Whiting that scored it about used to play for? I would be. Well, shit, you, have, oh, shit, you, have you could have put money on him fucking scoring yesterday. Should it should it have been allowed or was, uh, was it a handball? Was it a hand- I can't even tell. I mean, I've watched the, the replay. I can't even see. I can't tell. Like, it might have, might not have done it. VR might have gave it because they could have paused it at the right time, but I don't know. Nobody really looked like they were claiming for it. Yeah. Porteous was claiming for offside, I think, at some point. He, he was in. He was away over, like, one out. Fuck, that's where the defence were, actually, mm-hmm. when you look at it. Because I know Doig spoke, I was saying Doig's not defended that, and you're looking at it going, why is, why is Doig and Mitchell the two? I've said this before. Like, a ball comes into the box. Why is your fullbacks and that defending it? It's been before. It's been Doig and Cadden. Or, you know, where's where's yeah. the centre halves? And yesterday, Rocky was away almost at right back. So Porteous obviously filled out one as well. And the ball came in the middle. He's standing with his arm up. And the, the, the big striker's on, on the fullback. You know, and you think, what the fuck's going on? Um, just, just back, there was like a lapse into three months ago. Yeah, when we were losing goals all the time for these kind of crosses. Um, but I, I can't tell if it was a handball. I don't know. Don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But nobody looked like they were complaining too much for it. So You're the first I've heard mention it, to be honest with you. Well, it was, uh, it was mentioned on Twitter a few times. And I had a, had a look. I watched it. I wasn't sure. I think it would be when he brings the ball down. He's got his arm out and uses kind of like his arm and his chest to... Yeah, and if you get an advantage for that, it's supposed to be a foul, even if you didn't mean it. Eh? But Aye. I don't know. I don't know if he did. I can't. It's really hard to tell. Like I've watched the back. I watched the highlights this afternoon. Well, after work there at five o'clock. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I would be raging if we got a goal chopped off for it. I think. And I think uh, there the, the used to be the rule if it came off another part of your body or onto your arm, then that didn't count as a handball. I think they've done away with that now. I think it's aye because we've got a penalty if it just touches your eye. If it touches your hand at all and you score, the, the goal should... Uh, they change it too often, mate. Yeah. The, the rules are just... It's the fuck, is it? Because there was the one that in the derby we spoke about when Stevenson came run charging out and it hit the bottom of his elbow when we are going, well, how the fuck's he made to get the way Yesterday, I think Cadden hit a shot and there's another both player diving out like Stevenson did and you think, well, that, that must be a still more penalty as well and I'm shouting at the house, Colonel. We got told, Aye. we got fucking gaslighted that much about the derby one that it was a penalty. That must be a penalty. But nobody even... 
it wasn't even mentioned. It's never been shown in the in the highlights. Of, fuck all. It just went out the corner. You think, well, he's come diving out like Stevenson did. Aye. So, um, the, the referee in that, the, the, the referee in the linesman, the linesman, that, that one with Mueller, Mueller's about four yards on side. And he says, he's like, okay, I know he missed anyway, but they just guess, it's a they bizarre just decision. I just guess, well, mate. It was the same as put, put just in the derby. That was just a poor, a total guess that he guessed he was offside. There's no way he's got eyes that can pick that out when he's looking at a ball. But, but, but it's, it's, no, it's not even close. He's, like, he, there's two other players ahead of him. It's just, it just wasn't even... Hmm. But standards of refereeing, as we've talked about many, many times in Scotland, is shambolic. Actually, just to, to, to come on to that, because uh, our growth had the uh, sort of opportunity where I think it was waiting again. But running for the ball in the corner, just before he gets mm. to the side, he's leaving it. He's well offside. Linesman's flag goes up. Yeah. Referee doesn't give anything. They put the cross in. I think it breaks out to uh, Mitchell. Jack, who, come on. Who just rolls the ball back to, to the keeper, uh. don't they? Kind of knocked, knocked it back in. Obviously, short. Their, their striker gets it. And before he can get a shot, and luckily, Porteous is awake. And he comes uh. sliding in and makes the, the challenge. But... Oh, fucking weird passage of place. Even the even the uh, the coverage stopped. Right. I never showed it, and when I mean, they show it, the, the camera pans out, and the only two. I even think the boy was convinced. I think the, the boy that was, was striking. I think was, he was. Eh? And and Porteous was the only one, and Macy was looking like he might try and save it. You see the long shot, Doig, and that's looking away, walking back into uh, the position. <laughs> you know, eh? It was like, the, but then the thing is, like, it is a bit amateurish because uh, he's put his flag out. But you've, the referee will blow his whistle, eh? So, like, right. well, what's the rule? Go, go right. no, eh? Play the whistle. Play the whistle. Um, but they're not meant to put their flag up until he's touched the ball either. That's the other rule, eh? So that's why... Or they're they... to make a move to play the ball. That's why he's done it, because he's, he's gone running towards uh, it. Okay, right. Because that's the one that folk moan about. Oh, a fucking late flag, linesman and all right. that. But it's, it's actually, well, they're meant to wait now, eh? But it, creates situ- it can create situations like that, which was would have been magic if we had 2-0 down there, eh? Aye. <laughs> <It was laughs> uh, so. uh, well, anyway, we, we, we didn't go 2 0 uh, down. We equalised with uh, Mitchell scoring, we headed at the back post, similar to um, the run that he made for his goal against Livingston. Livingston, anybody he scored against before. Mm-hmm. Lovely wee ball in for Stevenson. Jamie, what did you think of that goal? Good head off, just done everything you wanted him to do. Into the ground, slippery surface, it's going to skid. Nigh on impossible to save. Um, I he took it well. I, I didn't think he, he was particularly brilliant yesterday, uh, Mitchell, but fully running, wasn't he uh, afraid to take the ball? Um, I actually like him, I'm not getting no at all. Just I thought the, the game kind of passed him by in quite large spells, but he was he was up and doing and he was in the box at both ends when you needed him. Um, and then obviously popped up with a goal, absolutely happy with that. So uh, aye, Stevenson again, he keeps popping up. Good cross, picking out a man. He sees obviously seen Mitchell coming in uh, at the back post. Good, eh? Their goalie had some brilliant saves yesterday as well. I should have done yeah. better with that one, though, eh? Do you know? Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a difficult thing because if you if you go down, you're heading it straight forward because it's the angle it is. But if he heads it down and you've not made the move, it's just skidding straight in. It's, a, it's left, impossible. It, to it, was more, it was more that he left it wide open, I thought. Aye. But, aye. Yeah. Well, the goalie did their bonus points for the uh, short sleeve t-shirt and that weather as well. Because no, no, often you see a goalie with short sleeves these days. But I seen somebody yeah. in, the, in the stand; they were wearing shorts, and the, it wasn't the cupboard, but just standing in shorts. I was like, it was the Harry. If he he Harry loves a pair of shorts. Like, yeah, he might have been, might have been him. <laughs> they kind of, they kind of call, uh, know him well enough to call him Specky, like uh, Greg does on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Harry was at the at the, at the game or no. Um, he stays in London in, in, in LA, so. Aye. Uh, hi, Harry, if you're listening. Um, so we'll get a half time one each. Uh, second half, we we'll get a few scares. Colin, do I have uh, Macy to thank for keeping us in the game at that point? Aye. Aye. I mean, the, the first one, uh, Rocky was a short shot with a head back, wasn't he? And Macy had to come out and dive at the boys' feet. And he's probably then no made. He's probably no made any saves you wouldn't expect him to make, really, wasn't it? It was unspectacular, but saves that obviously a lot of people think he's not capable of making based on a lot of comments recently. So, um, aye, he, he dived at the boy's feet. Then he, he saved the one 
two doing it near post, I think, weren't they? Yeah. The one he saved with his legs and then one he saved... Because the, they showed that one in sports scene the night I was watching it. Um, uh, Marvin Bar- Mar- Bartley was a wee... He's been listening. Um, talking about Port just, just letting the boys drift off him and that. He was also saying that for the the corn- uh, the first goal. Um, so he was picking out Port just to... I know with, with, like I, I did it a lot and I did it to look like a, a thing against him. It's because I see potential in him and I didn't see him learning quickly enough that it takes me. But but boys like Bartley and that are picking him out now and saying he's not he's not defended that one for the goal properly. That one where Macy this saved them doing it at the near post was he's watched the striker, he sees where he is, and then the boys just step one away from him and he's he's in with a clue shot of goal. Um, yeah. so it was pure defending really, but aye, Macy kept us in it there. Yeah. What do you think of Macy's performance, Jamie? Because uh, there, there was a lot of uh, discussion kind of beforehand. Uh, a lot of folks think Dabrowski should have been back in the team, etc. What do you think? I, I, he doesn't fill me full of confidence. It's, I thought he could have done better for the goal, considering how close he was. I'm not saying coming out to catch or anything, just the thought getting beat at that sort of near post. So, I mean, it didn't happen. It's funny. I'm not, I'm not pinpointing he was absolutely thought. I just thought he could have done better. But to be fair, that uh, five, ten minutes spell at the start of the second half, he, he proved that he actually it was a good shot stopper. And because I, had we went a uh, 2-1 doing, say quickly, I didn't lose a goal at the, the, the start of the second half. Again, I, th- I think it would have been folk uh, knitting soaks with their arse. But um, it's, we've, we've come through. As, as I say, I, he's no, I think we need a new goalie, but he's, I'm not his biggest fan. I, I, I don't think he he's uh, should be there for us or in long-term plans, but he done okay yesterday. If we can get a better goalie, I'll be delighted. Um, I, I think he gets a hard time. Because he's six foot seven, and it's like right, six foot seven. He should come and take every cross, and he should see. I'm shot. not expecting him to come and take that. It's it, it's the, the way that the no, ball. Somebody has the next said that yesterday. Somebody has the next says he should be coming and taking that cross, and you're going really. It's impossible for him to get out to that. No, nah, definitely not. Because you, you see the trick that when when Doig's gone. Remember, Doig's a centre half. That that's his natural position, or that's where he. He's come through. So he's just caught, caught underneath the ball, like uh, Rocky did as well in that space of the second half. It's the flight of the ball. Didn't get me wrong, Rocky should be doing much better than that. But I just think Doig, with a wee bit of height and, and what have you, just been caught under the ball. That's the thing. It's a poor, poor goal to lose. Um, we didn't lose it. Less, and I suppose it's important because we didn't want to give our growth anything to had on to. I think that was like the kind of the, why it was so important that we, he, he made those saves. Uh, and then the next goal comes for us, but Colin, what did you think of the, the goal? Talk us through it. Oh, cracking, Bill. The ball come in, didn't they? Come in for the right, and he, he one touch and then smashed it through the goalie, so or over the goalie. So it was a lovely, lovely finish. Um, would you question if the goalie dived out the way? I think that's what oh, I was reading during the week after the Rangers goal, so I'm not sure if, if folk would, <laughs> would say that, because that's what they were saying two days before it, but I thought it was a good finish, like I thought Morelos was a good finish the other day, but obviously, um, I, I don't know, that's what, that's I'm just devil's advocate question to, to you guys, because that, that, that was the theory after the, the Rangers game, but I thought it was a cracking finish. Cracking goal, cracking finish. He scored before that. Obviously, he was offside, and he put in nice finish in the bottom corner as well. Yeah. I'm not sure if he was offside. I can't remember if replays really Margaret cleared that up or not. Um, but it was another nice finish there as well. With his side foot. Um, whereas that one was more more the laces. So I were. Uh, they, hopefully, that's him back on back on song. Yeah. Um, that was uh, yeah. a screamer for us. But and Jamie, what about uh, the screamer for Mueller as well? <laughs> I, uh, it, obviously it's a mistake for the, the both defender there um, but I, you've got to be in these positions you know I mean you're not going to score goals if you're hanging out outside the box basically looking for a thunderbolt you've got to be in sc- scoring scrappy goals like that especially at places like that bad pitch heavy weather blah blah blah, blah. but uh, I thought no, it was good I'll just get, touching back on this bit but absolutely cracking goal but in the first half he was he was through with the goalie and he's trying to side foot him just like just blast it into the, the, the corner again you've put all your weight behind it and then he's it, to be fair when it's come back I thought he, the goalie had made a really good save and he's trying to chip him but just put your foot well, through that that, that, that was a nice wee attempt actually the one at the second attempt I can't even mean yeah. about the first one second one would have been a lovely wee dink over it the would have been 
Aye. And, but so I'm glad that he got his goal because you know he, he is a confidence player. Um, I, th- I think, but uh, the fans getting on his back isn't he? Isn't he helping any? And, and he didn't go for being a good striker last season to a bad one this year. It just it's, he just didn't. It's, that's oh. the crux of it. So um, I'm glad for it. I'm glad he got his goal. But I put touching back on Mueller. That's uh, just that. that Definitely one for the history books. I can see him uh, having that on his Sky Plus and going to hit me record and watch it again. I don't know, the YouTube highlight reel. Well, he did the big um, celebration and all that. He was claiming it like a proper goal, eh? even though it was like, right. come off the defender. The defender kicked it off his cell and he kicked it off the defender. <laughs> <laughs> Goal's a goal, though, eh? That's a goal. That's it. That's it, it all count. Um, mm-hmm. It's interesting, so we talk about uh, Nisbet, and it was interesting we comments. I think. Um, the fans were really supportive of Nisbet through the game and um, I don't know if you listened to Hibs TV or watched the Hibs TV interview with Maloney after it uh, I think it's Adam is talking to Sean and he says really good that the fans were behind them is that something that you've been wanting to see or question was like what does that affect and Maloney says and this was like a really interesting turn of phrase he says I inherited the situation with Nisbet or with Kevin and then he went on to say about the you know the fans appreciate him working hard or okay, whatever the rest of the, the answer was. Do you think there's uh, or what what could you do into that, Colin? That that suggestion that there was a situation there with the Nisbet that had been inherited. It's interesting. I never heard that. Uh, it's the first I've heard it mentioned actually. So it kind of caught me off uh, guard there. But I don't know. It could be, would, it, would it be the one in a move last year and like a bit, um, or, or is it the I don't know. What could it be? But he's, the position he's playing. Maloney, Maloney's just thought, if anything, he's played deeper for under Maloney, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe the lack don't of goals or something. What do you think, Jamie? Well, I, I, obviously the, the lack of goals, but under Jack Ross, he was playing as a lone striker as well. And big spells, no seeing any of the ball. Um, so if, you, if you're inheriting a player who is devoid of confidence, it's going to be through uh, no scoring goals and no getting the opportunity to score goals. So I think that's a big part of it as well. But I, I know people keep mentioning his dad, and quite rightly so. It's a big deal, you know, losing your dad like that and, and what have you. It does take a while to kind of get your head right. But also, people forget that he's not actually had a break. He went for the season into the Euros sure. and then straight back into the season again. So That's probably more an issue, actually. Of course it is. So, and then, obviously, if you're getting frustrated at playing uh, that kind of uh, tactic where you're basically a lone striker and you're not getting in... in, in Basically, Boyle's getting all the plaudits for scoring the goals. It, it, it's going to have a, a knock on your confidence. Just, as I say, I didn't think this false nine position is is his best uh, tactical position, but um, if he's growing in confidence because he's getting more of the ball, then maybe it is working. How pissed off do you think he is that people can't spell his surname right? Because <laughs> it's a big Absolutely. issue for me. Like ah. it's different <laughs> spellings all the time. Two T's, N E S P. What the fuck's going on here? It's like it's mental, mental. Do even a yeah, difficult one. Think. Don't ah. get my name wrong all the time, right? But it's my, I've got an unusual surname. Like it's no, it's no one that folk hear a lot. But this bit isn't it, like that uncommon. It's really strange. Really strange. Uh, uh, just, uh, I mean, even even some of the guys, the, the Glaswegian guys on the TV, they'll call them Nesbit. They call them Nesbit, so they're Aye. clearly going to spell it wrong. So. <laughs> I'd imagine it's maybe playing on his mind a bit. But then you'll have empathy <laughs> from Maloney because he's Sean. And I bet get that's careful, wrong all the time. Getting his first name wrong all the time as well. Is it ACN? Is it W? Is it U? Well, fuck, you know, you and Henderson will be the same, I'm sure. Aye. 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 Um, so just uh, on, the, on the subject to the managers, and, and we'll, we'll come on to talk about the, the media in a, a second. It's Valentine's Day, so probably appropriate that we talk about Dick. Um but Campbell is, uh, <laughs> so when we talk about the media, right, this is how we'll, we'll kind of segue into this section. He does uh, the bit about, uh, before the game, it was him telling a story to a couple of bairns about uh, catching fish or, or whatever. If you'd seen uh, kind of any of the TV stuff before uh, the game as well, as we're talking about the, the job that, that Campbell's done, you would think that he's Pep Guardiola or, and that we were going to play Barcelona when we went to, to Arbroath. And fair enough, they're having a great season, and he has done it. Like, I mean, you can't argue with the job that he's done, right? Fantastic. Like, to have Arbroath part time sitting top of the championship is outstanding. 
but you contrast that with Maloney, even after winning the game. So I can't mind if it was Kenny McIntyre or Brian McLaughlin. Brian McLaughlin asked some shite questions. Anyway, you asked, if you caught yeah. the interview with Maloney after the derby, and Maloney was starting to get the hump with him because of the questions were that bad. He asks questions in a similar way to Kenny McIntyre. Kenny McIntyre is a lot, a lot more aggressive when he asks questions, and he rattles off about six in a row before Ken. Aye. He's six questions in one. But he asked about uh, Ken, did you think your team could get back into it at 1 0 down? I was like, was it six minutes? You can actually the way they do it. I said, it was Aye. six minutes. Of course, I thought we were going to get back in it. He goes, what a fucking stupid question. Aye. But the what, what did you think of the press coverage uh, coming into it, Colin? Like, since pretty much from the when the draw was made, but but probably the recent coverage that Maloney's had in general. So, so I think the press coverage, right? I, I don't I've, I don't need a lot of the the coverage. However, what I've what I've picked up, I, I don't think there's an issue with a big Premier League club going to the team at the top of the top of the Championship. That being the TV game, and I'm hoping that that's going to be an underdog, right? No issues with that at all. Yep. That happens in the FA Cup all the time. Arsenal went to Nottingham Forest last day, two weeks ago. Yep. Leicester went to Forest. That they'll pick fucking West Ham going away, chilling them or something as well for for the exact same reasons that they think, or they might catch them on the hop, right? So no issues with that being built up and us being the the prime time game, if you like, um, for for the round for the reasons. No problem with it. The problem that, that that I do have is that, and and it's probably coming. It's probably come for the same Hertz fans that started the Hibs at stuff and all that. Um, is trying to equate Maloney to Cathro because he's young, I think. I mean, Cathro never, we've straight up already, Cathro never played football at any level, right? Probably about the same fucking, probably played against us at Dine Hibs or something, right? Four for a hand. Uh, so, so there's that, and then you've got Maloney who's won everything, apart from a Scottish Cup, which I didn't know till yesterday, never won a Scottish Cup, um, till this season. So, the you've got that, but he's, he's, I saw a clip last night, I texted you earlier, I, there was a programme on BBC Scotland last night at the back of eight called, and it's the Old Firm Facts Guy, and it's called Scottish Cup Facts, and they showed the clips, uh, well they showed the clips of the pitch invasion, for one, it was the first time I think on BBC hey. since, um, and the four-run man and all that, all that shit. Right. but they, they also showed the clips of Cathro's interview, when he's gone... Um, the situation and um, what, what's the problem and all that stuff. When's Maloney ever done anything, anything ever, even close to that? Nothing, never. Right, he couldn't. He? All he's done is he's he's maybe look because his eyes look quite big sometimes, right? But he can't do anything about fucking that, right? Um, and but he's never answered a question in that way. So where's these fucking equation coming for to to quit? to try and say it's the same thing. And then the problem we have is we've got Hibs fans fucking repeating this shit. Yep. I mean, it was. Because he's fuck all like Cathro for what I've seen so far. The Boyd went after him as well. But I think uh, in the, the Daily Record, that's with Boyd. He's right for Chris Boyd. He, he went after Maloney saying he didn't really speak to him when he played for Scotland, but he's reminded him of Cathro now. Uh, Jamie Jenkins getting a heart. So obviously, right, I should carry it. Hibs have been no great for a wee while. Like, if you're being kind, you'd say they've been no great. I mean, some games have been shite, but yeah. there's been other games where we've been all right and it looks like we're maybe about to do something, Ken. So there is some criticism you would say is justified because you're at a big team uh, at Hibs and you're going to get uh, scrutiny that you maybe wouldn't get if you're Jim Goodwin at St Mirren or uh, Alexander at Motherwell or, or whatever. I don't mean to be patronising these teams or, or anything like that, but they they get an easier ride than than Aye, Maloney's it's not as big had. A pylon. Aye, and it's just, I mean, Aye. the same. the same. Look, Mac, McIntyre was trying to get Stephen Glass out the job as right. early as Maloney's in the job now, early in the season, because the chairman went on the radio. So Hearts, Aberdeen, and Hibs are in the same in the same bucket when it comes to this. Same size of pylon on the internet, same size of same size of fan base really, and same size of club in the ter- in the eyes of Willie Miller and Kenny McIntyre and, and all the boys. So, yeah. yeah. You think it's a draw what was it? I think he's had it's a hard time, Jamie. Uh, he has getting a hard time. Um, I, I can see that well, obviously people are, are frustrated, but the, the media um, are, are definitely giving him a tough time. But he's not really helping himself. I listened to a couple of the Hibs interviews, like Hibs TV interviews last week, and he was kind of alluding to getting to the summer and this, that and the other. And it's like, John, we've still got a few months, you know what I mean? We, we shouldn't be looking to the summer for any kind of respite, you know, we're, we're still 
try to make a fist of this season, especially in a cup. Um, so the the fact that he's saying that is, isn't he, in my eyes, helping. But the the even during commentary yesterday, they were basically trying to um, anything that they could think of that was, would possibly get a rile. A, a, us getting a beaten, blah blah blah, blah I was mentioned in that commentary yesterday. Um, and any any Hibs fan used Hibs that get in the fucking CBA. Uh, does Mark Watson or, or Cathro? You know what I mean? That's I the fucking Hibs that fuck off. Yeah. But I mean, the, the thing is, you only hear you only hear what you want to hear as well at times, eh? Because there was a couple of times that uh, they mentioned twenty sixteen because Kenny Miller was like. I, yeah, you know, and and Amy Irons, I think, said before the game. I'm sure everybody was that uh, any neutral that's... was watching the cup final were were happy to see him winning it. So, I we, we, we'll ignore them to moan about the other stuff. You know what I mean? And that's I think they're right. Listen, I can see why would why would you know? Like, uh, I can see why I can see why the the media were hoping for a shock. That's what the that's what folk want to see in cups and top of the championship. So the story and their mates that gamble like, gives them good lines in that. Aye. You know, he gives them good. He gives them good copy. So that's the that's one of the the reasons for that as well. Well, it's one of one of the things that's uh, good, I suppose, about the current climate and can post lockdown. And obviously, there's a number of good hips podcasts now. I, can't, I forget what number we are when we go down. Can every new one that comes along knocks uh. us down. But um, I mean, you could take a take a pick for fan made content. That's probably where I would turn to now more than. Yeah. Well, can you tell you the last time I looked at well, we're, we're son, Sorry or... to jump in. We've missed out the old firm and Hertz. I oh, think Hertz has left. I so Hertz and Nunn. No, Hertz and Nunn. I. Uh, it's so it's Mother well. We've got Mother well away. Away. Mother well, that's got a tricky tie, that, but we've won there already this season. Um, I was just saying, so you, you've got like say down the slope. Uh, Hibs talk, the Hibs net pod, strong opinion Hibs. <coughs> Fan made content's yeah. good. Uh, yeah. Even the stuff for the clubs, like, obviously the stuff for the clubs made like propaganda in it, you know, like they're, they're kind of their own message, but it's still better than the stuff that you're picking up for the the newspapers. I can see a bigger and bigger shift away for that kind of thing. I would 100% listen to all the Hibs podcasts before I would go tune in to uh, Sports I used to listen to sports sound every day. Ken like he'd be in the yeah. car and it's even on every day. Podcast. No, I, don't I agree. Think it is, but... I listen to all the Hibs ones. I've got all the Hibs ones downloaded automatically and Sports Sound does, but I generally have a wee look at the thing and then delete it, whereas I always listen to the, the Hibs ones now. So I am I'm sure there's more and more folk doing that because even though you might not agree with everything that's said, it's it's still good to hear right. the other the other opinions and that. Um I, I think uh these boys are irrelevant. Sports not even on it anymore, probably for that reason. Celtics the same with other podcasts. Rangers fucking brought the podcast boys in to run their media because 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 they're the fucking their mentality. But um, I it's uh, I think these these boys these these boys all know they're on out of job. Eh? Papers numbers are drifting on the papers, and and if you're giving money to Chris Boyd, Ryan Stevenson, uh, even Tam McManus, and that like fuck, you know what I mean? The, like you couldn't get one. Fucking bit of sense out of all the mad they together. It's just okay. clickbait, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot of it. It's like anytime you see some some headline and uh, you, you look in it, it's very rare that uh, the person's actually said the words or that or it's a direct quote for the club or anything like that. It's just fucking. It's, it's, it's even uh, mental there that I'm just watching. I've just I would just go to the draw and delay there, right? Because I was watching it on my phone on the BBC app. But the boy, I didn't care who the boy it was drawing the cut, uh, drawing the hat, drawing the numbers. Out. Paul Slane. It's, it's the boy off the Open Goal podcast. So there's Paul another Slane one, Stephen. Uh, I'm uh, looking at it going, who the fuck's had to wait till his name came up? Uh, 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 but even, even then, I've stopped listening to Open Goal because it's it's all Celtic and Rangers, and then it's a small part uh, of the rest of the teams. I just thought it was one of the podcasts as well that that go. Uh, Oh, there's this brilliant story. Oh, what a guy! Fucking hilarious. He he he, he shot in my shoe and Ken, he cut the he cut the, the bottoms out my my socks and that. Oh, aye, brilliant, brilliant. Wow, what a banter! Uh, he's not getting that. That's a dickhead. Imagine doing that in that year, what? Aye, but hey, well, mm-hmm. imagine the HR. Can okay, you be straight to HR? Wait, uh, what did you uh, think? Uh, what did you think was uh, what was going through your head when you decided to shite in your colleague's shoe? <laughs> oh, I thought it'd be great banter in that. Yeah. On the same day, you've also cut up his tie. 
Ah, bro! Has he found the fish in his car yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> went away. Patrick McParland didn't even use another good one as well. By the way, he does a newsletter um, rounding up hip stories as well, which uh, you can you can sign up for. I would recommend that. It is so do that. Do you that after you listen to Long Bangers? Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, listen to us first. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> that's uh, that's true. And actually, we are due. Uh, so obviously, there's still. Eyes to be dotted and T's to be crossed, but we are due to have an episode with Sean Maloney this week, uh, which I think probably will be a bit more balanced than what he's been getting with the, the mainstream Mate, media. So, I we probably well, we could bring it up and see how he's what he thinks about it. I actually think you can see for uh, some of his answers that he, he deals with them with a bit of contempt. It doesn't like he talks any shit. Well, that's about Celtic, does it? We spoke about earlier in the year. I can't remember the quotes, but he, he rubbished some questions for the boys. Not in a Gordon right. Strachan style manner, but in a, in a, what the fuck are you asking me that for? And that's what Maloney is to an extent, because he's Aye. he's done that when you said there in the derby. What's, what's the question? And then yesterday was six minutes in. Almost Aye, like, it was the same. Me, like, are you fucking really asking me that? You, what's Aye. your fucking job? It was the same when, uh, just before Christmas, and he was saying, well, you've got to give them the day off. He's like, no, I right. him. after the Aberdeen game. Aye, Aye. Are you giving them Christmas Day off? No, oh, what the fucking boxing day? Kenny's like, he's almost thinking, are you for fucking real? That's the that's three times I've heard them give that Aye. kind of that tone off. Um, so he must be getting pissed off already. Maybe, but he came out, that one will help him. He needs to play along with it to an extent because well, these cuts will be on his it, case all the time. It's not on Boston Cogley any harm, is it? No, but he's at Celtic, right? So they can't cut him off. But Aye, they'll, they'll do it. They've, They'll do it, and that's because that's what they're like. We've, we've, we've seen it, they've done it with Cathro today. I mean, Cathro made that arsey sell that night, but they, they were on they were on his case for day one. Chris Boyd was like you mentioned, he was on him right away. He was still Aye. playing at the time for Kamarnik, I think. And, and he was because the Hertz fans were getting home dogs abuse when he went to the tiny, but they just, I mean, they're just they're in it for their own. They're obviously thinking they're a bit patronizing him because he's maybe a bit younger and that as well. It's like. You know, I don't, I don't know that. And if he's not giving them the stories that they want, I mean, even you look at it yesterday, I just remember it was Dick Campbell in his interview. And he got asked a question. He answered a different question. He got asked, but and he went, "I'm going to tell you this stuff." And they were like, "Ah, oh, brilliant, Dick! Thanks very much." You no, know, that's not what he asked them. Just fucking stop him and say that's not what I asked you, mate. But they'll not do it. They're just like because they're thinking, "Oh, if I piss him off, he'll not tell me." X, Y, and Z story, or he'll not come on Craig Green's podcast or whatever it is he's got to whatever he's got to do. Um, okay, right. So, Motherwell away for the draw. Now we know that. What's your thoughts on that initial reactions? Could it be worse? Yeah. I, 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 I was listening to Quick Bang uh, the day, and I thought you were spot on, Matty. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anybody who, who uh, wants to do it, just give us a sit of thing, Castle. No chance. <laughs> I didn't understand that. I've always but, been like, he'll tell you, yeah, every, every draw, I'm like, right, who's the easiest team in it? And that's who I want to go. What about the final? See if we were playing. See if we're playing Elgin City in the final. Happy with that. I'm no bothered a fuck if we'd ever play. There's, there's, like there's no medals for playing all the hardest teams first. No. Oh no no no. No, that we play is one of the hardest teams. Just what I put that out there. So oh, I don't want to get any any credit here. But uh, correct. Okay, what happens when we play them? Eh? So no worry. Uh, but I, I, I think that's a that um, that's a draw. Uh, we can. We can win, so um, I wouldn't be like any kind of fear going into that game. Um, although I will say that um, for me, uh, Kevin Van Veen is becoming one of the most hated players in the league for me. I can't stand him. Asshole of a man. Him, him, I don't like him. I think he's massive over there. I think he's shite. Kind of sometimes players, yeah. are, you get shite players and they maybe have like a wee four or five good games or something like that and then I say the commentators just go, they're always fucking brilliant. He he's a shite player. There's done a couple of good things. Because the way that fucking ah, oh, they go on about him like he's fucking I know, but amazing. It was, mate, it was after the first game of the season. It was a one game he played, and it was like we were mm. listening to the terrace in that podcast to another one there, and it was almost like did, did they just sing the European Football of the Year? Like Aye. the way they were talking about him. He's just fucking play for mother. He's a journeyman that's played for about twenty clubs in the lower leagues England, and he's been kicked up there, and. And now he's just, I mean, he scored a few goals and fucking he might put us out of the cup, but you know, it's a blip. Well, now that we've, we've slated him, even his goal at the weekend was uh, the deflection. The deflection, uh... right. Ken, he, he just like, you see him arguing with people and Ken, give it all that, you like. Uh, that's where you need poachers to be picking his Wayne Rooney studs. 
<laughs> <laughs> he's he watched that really documentary gone. There's wee studs. <laughs> he does. There's wee studs. <laughs> Got big and bigger. He's, so it's still two caps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, we'll go to uh, some talking points to, uh, for Twitter. So the first one's with Jack Gillies. Uh, Jack's on strong opinion. Hibs gave very knowledgeable about the German game uh, and ladies football as well. If, you, if that's your your thing, you should listen to Jack. Uh, it says, Lewis Stevenson was outstanding in midfield yesterday, really rolling back the years and proving why he's a modern day legend. What's on that, guys? Uh-huh. Yes. Spot on. Yeah, right. 100% agree was excellent yesterday. Quick bang, this came up, right? And I made the point, I call it, I think if you remember, we used to have conversations with that. It was when I worked at HSBC, and you were over the road, and we would uh, can mm-hmm. meet for a walk in that at lunchtime. And we were talking about Stevenson, he's a good player in that, but he just doesn't impact games. Kind of games are just, but he was in midfield. Yeah. Never, it was like he never won his one-on-one. He would just be like, be there. I can totally understand why he's no had a career in midfield. If he played like Lewis Stevenson played midfield on Sunday, you'd have him in your midfield all day long. Aye, no, he took the took the leadership right on, like because he's captain now as well. It's almost like it's added a bit to his game. Aye. Uh, Tonto Hibbs uh, said some good performances throughout the team, but we miss Hanlon, in my opinion, and Dick Campbell is a class act. We can cover that as well. We mentioned about Hanlon. Uh, you only realise how good he is when he's knowing the team. I think so. I'm open myself up there to the next time he comes in and makes a mistake or oh, he gets clean. He's not strong enough, but I think I think we'd be a better team at the moment. We'll be a better team in a minute. But I, uh, Dick Campbell came across well in his interview, as much as like as I've sounded like I've slated him there. He did he did speak well about us after the game. No, I uh, didn't get drawn into like the, the the media darling thing about trying to uh, about the banana skin. He wasn't he drawn into that at all. I did think before the game though I was going yes man me smug cunt like when he was coming to shake Maloney's hand I thought oh, he's looking like he's looking like a big patronising bastard here I but then at the end of the game he just quickly shook his hand and fucked off took his beating and uh, spoke all right about us Aye. Uh, and then he gave Kenny Miller a shot at his hat as well which was nice of <laughs> Uh, Kenny Miller was good commentating. I thought he, he, he was, again, was it, who, who was it? Was it Paul Mitchell that was actually commenting the game? Um, oh, whoever it was was big. Somebody was it, it? drawing him into the try to draw him into stuff. I know again that about Hibs and what have you, and it's like you're a prick. But um, somebody, he didn't write. Somebody was saying that uh, obviously you wouldn't see it on the TV because he's like behind the camera doing the talking, but. Uh, if they could see the gantry for the, the stands and the same when Hibs were having chances he was getting there oh Kelly can, uh-huh. can get but right he's, I mean, it, he's, so. he's a, a, I don't know he's never been a hippie like, but he, he, was, he came through the Kenny's from Muscle Bride uh-huh. Kenny's no, he's through the area he knows a lot of Hibs fans he played for Hibs as a lad in that so I'm sure he's got as much as he played for Rangers and he's a Rangers man he played for Celtic he's a, he's a fucking mystery at the end of the day uh-huh. like. he, he's professional. got some kind of affection exactly he's got some kind of affection to Hibs I think uh, he's never he celebrated his goals against us but he never rubbed their face in it from, to my memory nah, I, I, I come I across well I never disliked him um, I never um, went as far as I liked him either but I never disliked him actively he scored like a goal in the 3-1 millennium derby didn't he well, I guess goal yeah. in that game I'm sure yeah right. Uh, Disco's two said how bad the referee was, uh, and Louis would be like a new signing. So I was talking about the referee, he was uh, he was shite. Uh, William Lewis was tremendous. Neil Rent and Lewis Stevenson keep him in midfield. Brunswick Bill did White and no handle the ball before he scored. They kind of covered all of that. Uh, LG and Cow, should the game not stop when the offside flag goes up? Porto saved us massively just before the Demi Mitchell goal. Yeah, probably. Probably if the flag goes up, probably should stop the game. But then it uh, comes into the referee mistake. See on the Newell, uh, the, the midfield thing, keep Stevenson in there. Newell's a left foot and Stevenson a left foot. That'll, f- that'll fuck up the, that'll fuck up the balance and all that. Well, I don't know. Like the conversation we had about having a left in in defence. Well, can you have two in the midfield? Dave will need to confirm that. Dave, if you're listening, you can text in AO two nine five or tweet us because we actually want to find out the answer. I'm genuinely, I'm, not, I can't, I'm, I'm half ripping the piss, but I'm genuine as well. Can you have two lefties in the middle of the park? He would say no. But it was because they're further out or something. But then surely it's the okay. same problem. They're going to go, they've got to cut the same way all the time, eh? You've got to. So to and... Aye. Aye. Uh, Matthew McMahon said, uh, Rocky looking shaky on the ball, which doesn't suit Maloney's style, so feel like it's an odd signing. So Rocky Aye. did have a few 
shaky moments on the ball, but do you think that was because of the pitch? Do you just think that's a, an ability thing? What, what do you reckon? I, 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 I see what you were saying earlier about the uh, positional sense, or is it tactical because they're so wide apart? Um, even if you look at the, the Simon goal, as much as Doyle Hayes has lost the ball, Rocky's miles away and he can't get over to cover. Um, it's a good, good strike, obviously, but it's um, if, if your central defender's there, you're not really having to worry about that shot being taken. And it, you see him quite a lot. He's like a way out at right back. Mm. I, I don't know if it's tactical. He gets dragged but, right out there. Like, um, he's slow. Aye, I'm not sure about him yet. I think he is maybe sure. if it's a back three, he's maybe the one in the middle that's not that's there to just get his head in the way. I mean, he put his head in the front of a boy was going for, I don't know, some kind of overhead yeah. kick or something yeah. and he just stuck his head in. He's maybe that kind of boy, a defender rather than a ball player. And and if he's got coaches yeah. and handling the other side of him, then maybe maybe look all right. Just match up with the big man, take bit my Van Vino on and all that kind of stuff, the physical stuff. Doesn't need to do too much with the ball, because when he's got the ball at his feet, it does seem a bit of a And it was uh, an odd one I'm booting the boy at the park, I know I was like he was, he, I think he cleared the country because eh, he's right on the sea I think. <laughs> it landed in Forfa <laughs> he just went fuck all his eh, he just like that's it in the water that's, that's what they one say, of those ones you definitely have to shout fuck all uh, as you hit it as well uh, eh. <laughs> like the commentators now like what's he doing like, you've noticed the time there's no doors at the side I'm just fucking just what they <laughs> probably just because he could <laughs> just, I, I could do that it's an odd thing <laughs> brilliant <laughs> Uh, you didn't see enough of that these days, I don't think. Mate, uh, who was the boy that played for Motherwell with Strikers? Steve Kirk did it at Tynecastle. Mm, put the leather the ball, the but he uh. uh, hit like a wheel. Sure, it was like a wheel assay or something, didn't uh. he? Because the Hearts fans mm. hated him for that after there was a big gap yeah, about it. Rob uh, Douglas at Sunday yesterday for the game. Aye. He apologised for it on Twitter. Aye, yeah, I saw that. Uh, uh, fair play. I mean, gave, gave his clubs or something as well, didn't he? It happened a wee bit at St. Johnson. Um, would have been under Heckenbottom, I think. In the game where Omionga played the, the re-ball into McNulty to score. And we won. When the, the, they were warming up for that, uh, I'm sure one of the shots went into the, into the crowd and yeah. had a wee laddie. And they go, can they come out with stuff for them after the game? Can club I remember. And all that, that kind of stuff. I used to sit in the famous five lower when the my daughter was a lot younger and the kids seats and that and uh, before the nets went up and I used to we used to get there fairly early I used to be sitting there the whole time thinking like totally switched on before the game because they're fucking it, about it. the efforts they come flying in there <laughs> mental but they put the nets you're, up now eh? you're better in the top tier for the shooting at, at the hibs before the game uh, James Lumsden said our centre backs don't want to head on a ball Porteous is an animal but never the biggest we need someone beside him yeah I agree with that they're, they're yeah, we didn't have enough eh? I, and it, you should never ever let the ball bounce. It, mm. it, 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 anything can kind of happen in these situations. But as I just well, said, uh, yeah. the play of the whistle didn't let the ball bounce. Yep. Um, I didn't understand that at all. Uh, if, if Rocky is that type of defender you've just mentioned, the corner, I would expect him to put any seed through stuff as well, but it just doesn't seem yeah. to be the type. And by the way, another reason for him to uh, an excuse, if you like, um, he when he came, he couldn't play two games in a row. Remember, they dropped him. Yeah, he's played about fucking five or six now in, in, the, two, in about three weeks. Yeah. So maybe he's uh, and he, maybe he's maybe he's struggling a wee bit. But we've maybe anybody else able to play there. Well, my guess. He, uh, he had a muscular injury towards the end of the game. It's really about the if he was just killing time there, but he looked like he pulled Aye. up. Uh, yeah. So maybe maybe you're onto something to call. Uh, McCann C uh, said, "Should Maloney not have put on Melkerson for the last five minutes just to blood him?" Yeah, Could should have nice done. Nice to see him, I think. Yeah, but uh, well, I don't know what, what, what the... had, had we used all the subs by then? What's the rule for the Scottish Cup? Is it three subs? Five. No, we used we used four. I think yesterday, didn't Did we? we? So right. it must be five. Right. Um, but you can only do it on three occasions or something, can't you? Aye, unless you do one at half time. And, well, I like we did the other week because that's been was counting up. Eh? Um, so I don't know. We, we, we probably brought, probably used the three occasions up. Um, right. Okay. I, what I, I, you need to explain that to me. I didn't get that real. So is it I just know. like you, you have five subs, but only three? You can only make three substitutions. Like it, so three times. All oh, right. I see. Okay. Right. Aye, 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 aye. So you would need to bring. I feel like you're saying two or three on at the one time. Aye, but then use the three. Uh, I think we used the three occasions oh, yeah. with five minutes to go, so we never had a, another opportunity to bring on the last side. All right, that makes sense. But I, I, I didn't care what's happening with, with Melkerson there. 
Um, is it fitness? Does he not think he's quite ready yet? Is it? Well, he's on the bench now, so he must be getting closer. I'm hoping Saturday we can maybe go and do what we did in the first game of the season and take two or three early goals, and and then uh, you can maybe get him on for the second half or for the last half hour. Aye, that'd yeah. be good. Uh, Jason said, people are too quick to judge on Maloney. I reckon we would have went out the cup under Jack Ross, uh, especially since we went 1-0 down. So we did have a great record of coming from behind under Jack Ross. We did have a great record of not going out of the cup, so... We did have an excellent record <laughs> of not going out of the cup, so... Uh, although so that's did, the most hypothetical... Did go out of every cup he entered, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, but I, I agree a bit about being too quick to judge on Maloney. I, I think... It's just a, my opinion. I can focus. We're only playing our growth, but uh, again, you go to uh, how how good our growth were getting. Or we were told they were Wait, before the uh, game. Correct. And as I think it was Raymond that said it yesterday as well. And quick bang. If if so, they're top of the championship. If we were away to Dundee or away to St Johnston yesterday, we we would have been. I don't think there's much between the bottom of the yes. top of the championship and bottom yeah. of the premiership. We would have been thinking that's going to be a hard game. And it's just the name our broth. People are a bit like, oh, so our broth are just part timers. But I mean, they're not just part timers. They're, they're the best part time footballers in Scotland. He's went round because he's, he's even part time. Eh? He's got a proper job Aye. in real life. These are boys that are maybe earning good money being joiners, sparkies, I don't know, project managers or fucking lawyers or whatever it is they do in the daytime. They'll be keeping themselves fit and, and they're, 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 they're the best part-time footballers in the league other than maybe some boys that Cove Rangers because they're way up north, can you? Megansons and, and, and the strikers and that. But they're the, that's why they're up there. It doesn't matter they're part-time. They'll be training loads. They'll be training every day. It's just that they can't, they can't afford to be a full-time footballer. Yeah. A lot of them. Um. But there are signs that it's come, starting to click. Yeah, I think the amount of chances we're now starting to create, if we can carry on putting them away like we did on Sunday, then you know things could be looking rosy. Um, Jeff Ashton said we need a settled defence and then see if Rocky settles down a wee bit. At the moment, there's lots of good things, but a couple of fucking scary ones. Not good for my ticker. Hopefully Nizzy kicks on after his goal. Uh, as our old boy, uh, we deserve to win. Uh, PYW, or well, by the way, I think it's maybe meaning PTW. <laughs> I just spelt the three letters wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we did, we did deserve the win. Um, I, I think we'd all like to see a set of defence settings once everybody's back and fit. Yeah. We'll, we probably will. Uh, Vince Robinson, Chris Cadden, like a new sign, and what an engine the lad has. Uh, Jamie, you mentioned Cadden before. Uh, is there an argument to say that he's been our best player in recent weeks? I, th- I think so. It, it, it definitely gives you a, a, a dynam- dynamism to, to get up and down the, the wing. Um, obviously, it, it maybe a, being a wee bit of boil shadow before um, and just being unleashed, but he needs to do better with the uh, deliveries for me. Um, he'll probably get to the year and quite rightly so. Um, but as I say, the assist, the, the wee bits of delivery, I think I'll let him down just raise your head see what's going on before you play in the ball is, aye on, on a lot of occasions I think other occasions that others could do more to, to yeah. go and get up and end it but yeah, I agree there was the element of truth in both points of view there didn't yeah mm-hmm. um, 21-5-16 Charlie says have they found the ball that Rocky booted into the sea yet uh, <laughs> doubtful um, and last <laughs> point just comes the hang they were saying in the warm up eh? I'm, I'm putting that in the fucking water at some point. Aye. see who gets a chance to do it uh, uh, Lisa called me said that uh, a good number of our players look mighty fine in the rain or maybe you meant thoughts in the game itself I, it was a good win thought at times we still looked a little too scrappy but all a learning curve I guess and I think that goes back to what we were saying there but things starting to come together uh, okay just before we wrap up then Ross County on Sunday, uh, Saturday how do you see that going Colin? Um, oh, hopefully we can Hopefully we can score a couple of goals and pick up, pick up a win. I'm not sure what their forms are like. Did they play? Were they at the cup already? Did they play at the weekend? They, no, they, they were out. They were out. They were out. I, um, I think they've been doing no bad. They've been doing all right. Been doing all right. Revival. They have been. Because they're, they're, they're not even getting really talked about as part of the relegation battle at the moment, aren't they? So they've kind of scooped themselves a bit clear. They're probably sitting close to Aberdeen or maybe, or 10th maybe. Um I think based on, I'm hoping based on yesterday that they carry that on again and, and we, we start improving because 
we, we need to start picking up points. We're no, we're no mile, million miles of fourth place. A third place is probably a better stretch now. Unfortunately, they've got enough points in the bank because they've gone on a shite run at the moment, and all, which is which was always going to happen, and we've not put ourselves in the position to to take advantage of it. So, I think we'll I think we'll win two 0 you, Jamie? I think it'd be two one, um, but I, I definitely think that as much as people were buoyed by the Hearts game. Um, you can see from recent games, Ibrox, Abrof were creating more chances of getting more on target, which was obviously a bit of an issue prior to that. Um, so there is definitely a wee bit of change in some, I, I don't know what it is, but I think we'll have um, too much for uh, Ross County and, and it's obviously trying to keep Charles Cook yeah. uh, quiet. And, and that, that would be probably their only uh, real threat. Um but as I said, they have picked up points of late, but I, I still think that we'll have too much for them. And Maloney really needs to go and put on a performance because um, you've got Celtic to beat after, which, to be honest with you, they're the best team in the country at the moment in my yeah. eyes. So I, um, I I think we'll win. I think they need to put on a bit of a show as well. Well, it's uh, Harry Clark who uh, tweeted out there earlier on this evening that he's back in training. He reckons he'll be Good back soon. Aye. Put soon course. back. That was his tweet, soon back. And that's all we're out there. I think like, anybody who would have worded that tweet. Maybe it was Yoda that tweeted Yoda. it from. <laughs> soon be back, I am. That soon be back, maybe. Aye, but just mm-hmm. soon back. That's weird. Um, right, that's pretty much it. That's how we time for tonight. Uh, what have we got coming up? So potentially Sean Maloney on Wednesday. Um, and we will try and get out on Wednesday night, assuming it goes ahead. On Thursday, we look like we're going to have uh, Liam Allison yep. from Retro Video Club. I, to, I remembered that without checking my notes here, Colin. You, you're impressed. Impressive. Uh, join us for short bangers, which should be a uh, hoot. Um, and then we'll have quick bang on Saturday at some point. Might need to get somebody to host that for me because I'm dead something on Saturday. I'm not even going to be at the game, which is... Uh, I'm not going to make it either. I've got plans. Oof. Right, so... If anybody wants to host, uh, quick bang, gives a shout. Um, and then Sunday we'll have heat bangers. You can find us on, where are we? How we have a thread on Hybe's Bounce. Um, you can see us there. You can get us on Twitter. We have a Facebook page as well. You can subscribe at all the usual places wherever you get your podcasts. And we also have YouTube and Recast. So pretty much fucking omnipotent. And you've got an email address. We have got an email address, longbangers at gmail.com <laughs> if you want to sign us up for anything or uh, <laughs> send us an email's interest and stuff that I can forget to talk about on the podcast. Um, as always, please uh, please share the podcast wherever you see it and uh, let folk know about it. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for listening. Jamie, call, thanks for your time tonight. We'll catch you next time. I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee I don't drink water, no, 